I've been looking forward to this interview. Um, Jim Ross became a friend um, during one of the uh, campaigns, I guess, we were doing for the Literacy Council, and uh, just such a, a great guy, nice guy. And I was a fan uh, before I was a friend because I like people who can write certain ways. I don't even know how to identify what I like. It's not as easy as music. Like you say, oh, I like rock or I like pop. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, it's hard to, hard. I just never realized that. I just thought about it now. Okay. Jim Ross is in the studio. Let me put his picture on there. That's the book we're going to talk about. It's called In Season. If you're looking at the video, uh, Stories of Discovery, Loss, Home, and Places in Between. It's edited by Jim and he has a, an, uh, a story in there of his own oh. in early days of, of uh, being a newspaper uh, journalist. Uh, Jim is the managing editor of the Ocala Star Banner. Everybody who knows you is listening right now. They all wrote me earlier today. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get this wrong. I, and I, I never know how to pronounce this word. Adjunct? You're an adjunct instructor. Yes. At the Department of Journalism at the University of Florida. How fun is that? That is a lot of fun. I enjoy <laughs> teaching and, you know, working with college kids. It keeps you young. The book yeah, is called wonderful. In Season, Stories of Discovery, Loss, Home, and Places in Between. Oh, my gosh. Every, you, there's so much I can relate to with what you wrote in yours. So let me uh, stretch out my microphone. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for having me on today. You were a shy guy, huh? Very shy. I was, too. Do you believe that about me? That is hard to believe. Really? <laughs> well, you seem like a shy guy now, but I have to put on this fake thing. I'm fake. This is all not real. No, you are real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can remember like early days of, of any job where I felt like, gosh, am I dreamy? Is this, am I supposed to be here? Do I feel out of place? That kind of thing, right? Exactly. That's what happened for you? Yes. So tell me the story behind the book. It's called In Season. Um, what is the premise of the, the whole book? This book is a collection of essays. So it's nonfiction, and they're personal essays. And as you mentioned, I have a few essays in the book, but it's mostly other writers. And the connecting tissue is that we all wrote about our experience in Florida as adults. Most of the writers in there are like me. We grew up someplace else, and we came to Florida. We moved here as adults, or we visited here, mm -hmm. or what have you. A few of the writers were born in Florida, but then left and came back and wrote about their adult experiences in Florida. So it's a collection, and it's very diverse, lots of different points of view. It just so happens that we have essays that are set in all different parts of the state, from Key West all the way up to the Panhandle. I didn't plan it that way. It was just a <laughs> nice way that it worked out. And um, so... Those of your listeners who enjoy essays, maybe they've seen the Best American Essays that comes out every year, and that's a collection of essays that are published during a calendar year, all different sorts of things. I liken this to Best American Essays, except a Florida version with really? lots of palm now, trees and alligators. Oh, see, now that, <laughs> that in and of itself wouldn't get me to open up the book. But if you tell people that this is about those experiences, that w that's what will get you to the book. Mm -hmm. Be I think because we can relate to them. How did you find the authors who contributed? How did you do that? Well, the inspiration for the book really came from Lauren Groff, who is a brilliant writer who lives in Gainesville now, but she's a transplant from the Northeast. She's best known for her fiction, probably. She wrote Fates and Furies, which was President Obama's favorite book from a few years back. It was a finalist for the National Book Award. But she's also a very gifted essay writer. She wrote a piece in Harper's a few years ago talking about her transition to Florida and some of the difficulties that she had and how she kind of found a kindred spirit in Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings. Is that right? Wow. And the piece was published in Harper's. And when I read that, I thought to myself, there are so many people, writers, who came to Florida for one reason or another and wrote about their experience of trying to fit in and the different experiences that they had in the process. And I knew there had to be more like that. That was the inspiration for the book. From there, I sent out inquiries from friends that I have uh, in the business. They sent out inquiries to their friends. People submitted work to me. I looked around at some of the publications I know of, and it really all just came together. I like to say that there is such a thing as beginner's luck, because I definitely mm -hmm. had it. <laughs> and uh, these essays are so diverse in their perspectives. They're not all flowery. They're very heart-wrenching. Yes, and you're, that's absolutely right, Robin. They are lots of different perspectives, points of view, 
uh, you know, one of the ironies, the, the funniest essay in the book is probably the one about a woman who came to Jacksonville to care for her mom who was dying of cancer, mm. which you would think that would be the saddest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way she writes it and her perspective, she uses humor as a way to help get her through. So it's really very diverse. What you won't find in here, and I think this is important to mention, you don't find any of the Florida man stories, you know, the goofy crime and the oddball stuff that happens in our state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are fun stories. We all like them. We all like to have a laugh, a laugh at ourselves, you know, and some of the crazy things that happen. But that's not what this book is about. This is about more the the serious life changing experiences mm-hmm. that you have here. Yeah, yeah. In your case, you were, I think, 19 in your story? Yeah, I have two essays in the book, and they kind of neatly okay. kind of bookend each other. The first one that you're referencing is when I came to Florida for the first time. I was 19, and I was a newspaper intern. That was back in 1987. And, of course, the newspaper industry was thriving back then, especially in Florida. And I just had this wonderful experience of finding my way and making a lot of embarrassing mistakes and (laughs) goofy things. So uh, I wrote about that. And then I have an essay later in the book about that was published just a few years ago, you know, as an adult. Mm -hmm. Why did I come back to Florida? Why do I still live here? Why do I still work here? Mm -hmm. And so sort of looking, looking at one's looking ahead and one's kind of looking back. So why did you leave? Well, at the time, I had the internship, and I went back to school up north. Uh, and then I came back to Florida to work, and, I, and I've been here ever since. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Since 1989. But th- was the internship a paid internship? It was. You know, back in those days, the newspaper industry was uh, in a, on a lot more solid footing than it is now financially. <laughs> and papers, I worked at the St. Petersburg Times, now known as the Tampa Bay Times. They had a huge intern class. I think they had 20, 25 kids every summer. It was paid. And... Um, it was just a, we had a lot of fun. You know, we uh, often brag about the Ocala Civic Theater because, to me, it's as good as anything I'll ever see anywhere. And I think the same thing is true for some of the journalists we have at our local newspaper. Look, everybody likes to slam the local news because for whatever reason. But you are a high. You are really a good writer, and 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 you're not alone there. There's the, there's a lot of people whose work I've admired over the years. Some are no, no longer there. Some are no longer alive. As a matter of fact. Uh, and we've had them in the studio. Some of them have written books, like yourself. And uh, it's just, I, I just, we're really lucky that we have um, what you might consider. And, and I hope, hopefully, people think that about the radio market here too. That we've got some <laughs> some shows, <laughs> some shows that sound like they, they're from a bigger market. I guess I don't know. Uh, you have one story in there about uh, the um, lady's perspective about moving to Miami. Yes. And that was uh, that took me off guard. Yeah, a woman named Corey Ginsburg, who lives in Miami, moved there from the north for an academic job, and I think to pursue her degree and also to teach. And she very movingly writes about, you know, her, her parents were reluctant when she came down here. Uh, her parents were very worried about her safety for good reason. She writes very honestly in the essay about some of the crime in her neighborhood, uh, very moving anecdotes about the things that she sees around her and yet she just very much wanted to stay there that was her home her new home she wanted to establish herself she was not going to be run off and um it's just a a brilliant essay that Corey wrote and i i think that's what i one of the things i like most about this collection is that it's really unflinching it would have been very easy for her to just write about all the bad stuff Mm -hmm. or just write about all the good stuff but she mixed it both in it's a very honest look at what it's like as a young woman to try to establish herself and live in south florida it's not easy but it's also not unrewarding yeah exactly Exactly. And, and, and was that a, a conscious decision on your part to show um, the experiences of a, a diverse group of people and, and not just all like, you know, young white men, that kind of thing? Yeah. Diversity. I mean, we're a very diverse state and I really tried hard to get a mix of voices. Most of the writers are women, mm-hmm. uh, as it turns out. And um, so I, I tried as much as I could. I, I think when people read the essays, I think they'll see maybe a little bit of themselves in one or another, hopefully in, in lots of them. And the great thing about the essay form is that you're not necessarily looking for a conclusion or some sort of epiphany. The writer is really kind of taking you along the journey, mm-hmm. the thought journey, the maturation process. And it doesn't ev- doesn't always end up with a nice little bow tied on at the end. I mean, Corey is still finding her way in South Florida, just like she was at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but you go there with her. 
You have also a story about the perception of the Disney magic. Yes. And that was kind of fun to read that. Yeah. A, a woman named Sarah Fazelli, she wrote a story about how she came to Florida to work at Disney. And she had one job, but mm -hmm. it didn't work out very well. <laughs> oh, no. uh, she had some uh, physical problems um, uh, with the costuming and things like that. And so she was injured. And so she took another job. And then she's literally in the break room one day when she encounters Merlin, <laughs> the character Merlin, who actually winds up giving her some great life advice, mm -hmm. kind of like a real life Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And I love that essay because I think it's very fashionable for people to look down on Disney and say, oh gosh, you know, it's such a tourist trap and, you know, I can't mm. believe what it's done and all, all this, but you know, people go there for the magic. And it, usually we think of kids. Exactly. In this case, it was an adult who got right. some behind-the-scenes magic from a cast member. Oh, that's interesting. You want to hear my Disney applying for work story? Oh, my. All right. I went, I went there. Listen, listen. And I, tr I thought I would apply for The Beast from Beauty and the Beast. So I went there, and there's all these young people, and they're all dancing. And I thought, <laughs> I wonder if you have to dance. I don't know. So then it was my turn, and they said, let me see you dance. And I said, oh. <laughs> So I said, thank you, I can't dance. So then, so then I, I applied for Chewbacca. I thought, oh, that guy doesn't dance, right? <laughs> so I, I went into the room, and it was again, it was a long wait, long story short, let me see you dance. Dance, Chewbacca! <laughs> I, and then I said, you know what, maybe I'll just drive one of the buses. So then I went, I went to the place where you, where you apply for be a, to be a bus driver, and it was like $5 an hour. And yeah. I said, and it's in the middle of the night. I could have had the job, but I said, are you kidding me? $5,000. Did they require dancing? No. <laughs> no. Can you imagine that? So, uh, so you know what's interesting, though, about the, the uh, theme of the book is that Florida is so big that Miami doesn't really look like Jacksonville, doesn't really look like Pensacola, doesn't really look like Ocala. I mean, there's so many different things in this state that the experience, while there are some similarities, there's also some differences because of the locations. Exactly. I mean, you could probably do a book like this in any state where you have different parts of the state and different experiences and things like that. But mostly, you know, Florida, we all know it. There's not Florida. There's Floridas. There's mm -hmm. lots of Floridas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different parts. And Florida, or at least a particular part of Florida, is a character in all of these essays. It's not just a setting. Uh, the, uh, your book also, the, the essays uh, surround themselves around family, and you are an exceptional family person. There are a lot of dads like you. And uh, I love that fact, and I love your stories about you being behind the scenes at supporting your daughters. Thanks very dads. much. Yeah, you know, I mean, being a dad is great, and I'm very blessed. I have a wonderful wife and three kids, and um, I've been very fortunate to work with them on all different kinds of, <laughs> of projects, and that's, you know, that's the most important thing that I do, and uh, it's fun to write about that. And yeah, these essays, a lot of them do have that family angle that you're talking mm -hmm. about, and um you know, that makes sense. I mean, if we're going to be writing personal essays, what's more personal than your relations with your family and the different things that that leads you to? You know, I mentioned earlier the piece about the woman who came to Jacksonville to help her mom uh, who was dying of cancer. You would think if this were on the Hallmark Channel, mm -hmm. you know, it would be this very sad and very, you know, uh, resonant kind of, you know, the soft music in the mm -hmm, background. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, she and her mom are kind of <laughs> going at it like cats and dogs. You know, and that's very real. I mean, it that's is human. very genuine. You know, I wonder something. You from Chicago, and you moved to Florida. Did you have that that Yankee rebel experience that people always? Talk? I had it somewhat, but Florida is is kind of like um, I, I don't know. I've never really lived in South Carolina, but it seems like that would be even worse. Not worse, but more extreme for somebody from New York or Chicago. Yeah, I think so too. I have a friend who lived in Florida and went to visit her future husband's family in South Carolina. And when they were talking, the ladies asked her, so where are you from? And she said, well, I live in Florida. And they said, well, welcome to the South. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, you, when you started, you were in St. Pete. 
Well, actually, although I worked for the St. Petersburg Times, I always worked in Inverness. Oh, so, you did? Yeah, I worked for oh, eight, wow. 18 years in Inverness and Crystal River. I never worked in the, the main office downtown. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. wow. And of course, Inverness, you probably get a little bit more of the typical southern experience maybe than you would yeah 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 i would think so downtown st petersburg i love the courthouse down there i think that's a beautiful piece of architecture so that's where you lived then you lived over there for my first two years here i lived in inverness yeah and then when i got married i moved to ocala did you did you know um oh nick puglis Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. I, 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 in younger days, lived right around the corner from Nick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in fact, his father, also named Nick, by the way, who recently passed away, I didn't really know him, but he kind of knew us through through Nick, Nick Jr., and had wanted us because the, the the Italian heritage wanted us to play. Uh, uh, what's that song? Uh, da, 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 what's oh, that? Tarantella. Tarantella. Yeah. Right? And uh, I promised I would come over and play it at his birthday party, and then he died before his birthday. Oh, no. Yeah. But those... you did do a video with we did a vid- just for Nick oh, my before gosh. he died. <laughs> we did a video, and Joe Martone plays a genie. A genie. <laughs> And we say, oh, Nick has a wish, Jeannie. He wants to hear Tarantino. Yeah, it was fun. It was very amateurish looking. Now that I have to see. It is silly. Yeah, it it is fun. silly. It was fun. <laughs> so, so tell me, is this your first book? It is. Uh, it's my first book project. Um, and um, I hope to do more. University Press of Florida is the publisher. They are wonderful. And I'm not just saying that because they published my project, but they have excellent books out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Klinkenberg, former writer for the St. Petersburg Times, has written many books with them. He has a book out right now, uh, a memoir, and they do academic titles, but also general interest titles. And I hope to work with them again in the future. And, you know, Florida is just so, so many things to write about. Mm-hmm. Uh, your personal experience, history, other things that uh, I hope to do many more. Were you nervous when you were um, putting this together, not just writing your own essays, but compiling the other essays so you would do them justice? That's a great question. I was. You know, it, I wasn't at first because I was too new at it to, to know that I should be nervous, you know. <laughs> then once it hit me what was going on, yeah, because it's one thing to work with your own work. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's a mistake or a typo or something, well, so be it. But when you're working with somebody else's work, mm-hmm. you want to be very careful with it and you want to make sure that it's correctly reproduced. Uh, almost all of the essays in this book were previously published in magazines or literary journals, so they had already gone through an editing process. Uh, but still, I was the conduit to to get them into this book, and I wanted to make sure that I did right by them. So, yeah, that really, I had some <laughs> moments there uh, of anxiety because I was so worried about that. So, in, in addition to the normal things that an editor does, did you also have to weed out uh, like political opinions or anything of that nature? I didn't. You know, these pieces all ran as originally published. Uh, there were no changes, um, so I didn't have to worry about that. And I was really, I mean, like I said before, beginner's luck. I was just blown away by the quality of the work out there. At, at the outset, I thought there must be other pieces like this that would help a collection. But I didn't know it until I started looking, and then I looked and I found them in abundance. And the thing is, a lot of these pieces were published in smaller publications, literary journals, literary oh, magazines, right? the kinds of things that you wouldn't find on, a, on your average bookshelf and that the average reader might not ever come across. So I felt great about being part of a project that gathered them all, put them under one literary roof, yeah, and made yeah. it easier for people to find them. And my wish for the book, one of my wishes, is that when people read these essays and find out where they were published originally, that they'll go to those publications mm-hmm. because they'll like what they saw and they'll want to read more. <clears throat> we have to read a lot more than most people realize we read in order to do this show. Oh, I'm sure. Because we speak to so many, so many authors and so many different styles of writing. And I, I wanted to come up with a metaphor for writers that I like and I'm not just saying this because you're here, but I do. I like the way you write. Here's what it's like. Okay. Let me tell you first the metaphor of the writers I don't like. It's not that I don't like what they write about. It's just like, you know that area on I-275 near Tampa, by just before you get to the Tampa airport? Yes. It's always congested. Yes. Some writing feels like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's a struggle, <laughs> and you got to pay attention, and it's just not fun. And then there's the Blue Ridge Parkway. 
<laughs> which is beautiful, and you're just so happy to have a car, and you can drive on it, and it's smooth, and I don't remember ever having traffic on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and that's what reading somebody like yourself feels like, if I could use those two metaphors. Um, and it just it's just a joy. And um, That is very kind. Thank you. And, and it's in the newspaper, too. It's not just in the book. It's the way you write. Thank you. So, and, that, and I think you are like that. I mean, you have that personality. Well, any writer hopes that what they write sounds like them mm. and that people wouldn't look at it and say, oh, my gosh, t- I'm talking about essays or nonfiction. You know, I, fiction, obviously, those authors have to take on different, you know, sorts of approaches with their characters and such. But for a nonfiction writer, it, it's a great compliment when somebody says, that sounds like you. That sounds like your voice. Do you know, um, at the Will McLean Festival, I'm sure you're familiar with that, yes. right? Um, the songwriters that p- participate in that tell the Florida story also. Um, and, yet, and yet, this is not. This does not feel like that, if that makes sense to you. It's, they're both legitimate and they're both good. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's a, it's a different feel. This feels more like the Florida I know mm-hmm. in your book than the Will McLean folks do. Well, that that is also a great compliment. You're paying me many great compliments. Today. Thank, <laughs> you thank deserve you. them. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to not compliment those fo- those folk singers, though, because no. they're good too. I just no, I understand exactly what you're saying. It is different, um, and I hope that people have that same reaction to the book that they read some of these essays and say, "Yeah, that that kind of sounds like my experience," or "I think I know what they're talking about," or "I had something similar," or whatever. I mean, that's that's what a writer hopes for when when he or she writes an essay so that people will see something or they'll they'll recognize a thought or they'll recognize a process of thought or an experience and uh and that i think that's one of the great things about reading mm-hmm. and one of the great things about the fine arts you know you can not to put too fine a point on it here i'm getting a little esoteric but yeah to to see that and to spark that thought and that recognition and then you go off on your own direction. You don't stay with the author. The, the author's experiences are his or hers. Then you go off on your own, but that helped get you going or lead you there. And that's that's all that a writer could hope for. Oh, covers are very important to cover art. How did you decide on that? Is that an original work by someone you know? Yeah, once again, I have to hand out a bouquet to the University Press of Florida. Mm-hmm. Their art department came up with that. It's beautiful. I've received many compliments about it. And uh, it really pops off the page and pops off the shelf, you know. And when mm-hmm. you look when you look at it, I think it really stands out. And I'm very, very indebted to them. So have you had that moment where you see the book uh, at Barnes & Noble? I haven't yet. <laughs> I, I, I haven't yet. I've seen it in our publisher's spring catalog. Oh, nice. And, you know, you turn that page. <laughs> <laughs> you see your book and, and your picture. And it's, it's, well, you know, it's humbling, you know, is, is what it is, you know. Um, Did you? You, uh, have the opportunity to meet actually face to face the writers some of them I have mm-hmm. uh, some of them I knew uh, before mm-hmm. uh, and we had met at different conferences or some of them I uh, like Bill Maxwell for example I, I worked with him at the St. Petersburg Times uh, others I had not met until after the book was published uh, there was a conference in Tampa back in March where a lot of us were there so we met there oh nice and uh, so some I knew some I didn't uh, communicated with all of them in the modern way you know by mm-hmm. email <laughs> and um, but it's really neat the the community of writers in that in that book um, in our communications you know through the year or two years of, of the project were, were really special and really neat. And uh, like I said before, it's, it's fun to get all that work under one literary roof. And it's also fun to talk to all of those writers. You know, I, I feel like I'm the, the geeky guy who got, <laughs> got to meet all the cool kids because I sponsored a party, you know? Yeah, right. I like that part of, by the way, I like that part of your story where everybody was, was making you out to be the cool guy, the rocker and whatever. And you felt like that's not me at all, but I'll take it, you right? <laughs> right, when I was in college, yeah, they thought I was a rule breaker because <laughs> of the way I got the internship, but I, I that was not my personality. So. <laughs> Are you more able now than you were when you were younger to be honest about yourself in your writing? That's a really good question. Um, I think that's something that a lot of writers struggle with. I know that, that I do. 
It's not so much that I worry about revealing this thing or another. It's that I worry that I, if I'm doing it, if I'm able to convey something bigger. Mm-hmm. Because these essays, it's not just about what happened to me. It, it needs it needs to be something else. There needs to be leading the reader somewhere or into some kind of a, a thought of their own. And, and I don't always know if I can do that when I relay a personal experience that I've had. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's a struggle for anybody, I think, who writes personal essays, is is figuring that out. There, there are people who have stories that they want to tell, and they do. They worry about that. They worry about offending friends or family mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and that is, that's, a, I guess you'd call it an occupational hazard for the for the personal essayist. But uh, people sometimes, when you read these essays, that'll drive the person back inward to have their own experiences come to the forefront. And some of those essays actually act as a mirror. Yes, they do. And people, and sometimes, funny enough, you know, we were taught in school, well, don't sit down to write until you know what you're going to say, you know, mm-hmm. don't, until you've got it all figured out, then you put pen to paper. But actually, with personal essays, you might start that way, but mm-hmm. you probably don't end that way. And it probably doesn't last very long because the process of collecting the thoughts and putting them into words, it leads to other recollections or thoughts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or analysis or things like that and then all of a sudden you're going someplace else um, and that's a it's a fun experience but it can't just be a, a selfish or inward experience the finished work anyway has to be something that's of, of greater importance or greater value to a reader it's not just what happened to me it's here's how I thought about it here's how I remember it here's how it affected me and you reader maybe you can take something from this too does it open up Pandora's box? Do you have everybody and their brother not telling you their stories? It, it could. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, people would read it and say, hey, this happened to me. But, you know, that's great. Like I, I mean, told you my, my Disney story. And I love those stories. <laughs> and, 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 and that's a great way to, I mean, we're friends, but for other people I don't know whose stories I don't know, I'd, I'd love to hear those stories. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's wonderful. Everybody has a story to tell. This is really a charming book. Uh, the book is called In Season, Stories of Discovery, Lost Home, and Places in Between. It's edited in, in, in two, two of the entries, right? Two? Yeah, two. Written by Jim Ross. Uh, call us if you would like, right? We're giving this one away? We are. Okay. So call us if you'd like the one that, that Jim brought in. Um, we will leave it for you here at the radio station. The rest of you have to buy it. I'm sorry. You have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I found it on Amazon. Is it for sale at the Star Banner? No, not at the Star Banner, no? but uh, the University Press of Florida at, at their website. Also, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you know, all the, all the places where you would buy books. It's available. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Frank. Frank, you got the book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. Uh, yeah, Frank just wrote a book, too, as a matter of fact, and just saw him a little while ago. Um, Jim, thank you for coming in and for sharing this and for being a friend. It, it's always uh, I always love seeing the stuff you post on Facebook and the stuff you post on in the Star Banner. Or is, that, is it called posting? Posting? I think so. Have posting. you always wanted to be, write a book? Has it been in you your whole life? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. I think I think every writer does. You know, it's yeah. just something that's more permanent than a newspaper column or, or things like that, or even a, a, a journal article. I think every I think all of us want to do a book project. Do you um, <laughs> Do you think that all the years of being a journalist? Um, uh, how do I say this? Made you able to tell a story in fewer words. Maybe that's the better way to say this. That's possible. You know, it could be. I'll tell you where it really helped was that, you know, some writers talk about having writer's block. Journalists don't have writer's block. <laughs> you can't. You know, yeah. it's, it's our job. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard somebody once say, he said, you know, my father never had truck driver block. <laughs> <laughs> he was a truck driver. When it was time to drive, he drove. <laughs> I'm a writer. And when it's time to write, I write. Now, easier said for a daily news story than for a personal essay or something like that. But... I don't have any of those worries that I'm going to sit down and not be able to write. I can write. It might not be very good, uh, but I can always go back. <laughs> oh, no. I think, you, well, that's like saying a great artist is going to have a, a not-so-great sketch. Well, maybe, but it's still better than most people can do. Um, we had we had an author on not too long ago, and she's also a journalist, and she said the way she approached her book was to write one article at a time, and it became a book. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to approach it. So, uh, Jim Ross, thank you so much for coming in. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much for and, having uh, me. Thank you for 
for all you do for our community too, all your volunteer efforts. You are amazing. Well, right James, back, right back at you, James the Butler. <laughs> show up everywhere. For the, hey, a little little uh, tidbit. I don't know how many of you know this. We did a, a fundraiser with um, Manal Fakori yes, and and Riyad Fakori in, in their mansion, in their castle, and and Jim was the uh, the butler, and we were the the musicians in, yes. the, in the corner. Yes, it was very yes. enjoyable working with Jim. That was fun. Except you never come out of character. That was crazy. <laughs> I, ne- I didn't see you there at all. I just saw your character. All right, let, me, <laughs> let me put the cover of the book on here. There, there it is. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief from the source WOCA Republican House Speaker Richard Cor-